Hello everyone, this is History Forge. My name is Taylor Hamlin. I'm going to be mixing it up a little bit and doing this in my apartment, not in the classroom. Um, welcome to the exhibit category. We're going to be going over some of the final things you're going to do to get your exhibit ready. So I'm going to jump out of this crazy looking video thing, go into this. Uh, you should recognize it. This is our five categories of National History Day. Go ahead and click on exhibits and that will take you to this page. Um, you should recognize it. And we're way past first step and second step, so we're going to scroll all the way down to the third step here, which says begin building an exhibit. And we've actually already been here for a while. Um, we've already gone through the writing doc. We haven't really talked about writing introductions, bodies, and conclusion paragraphs. We'll get into a little bit more of that next week. But I do want to actually open up that old doc right here, the one that says writing doc for exhibits. So the first thing you're going to need to do is have yours out. Um, if this is the first time seeing this one, you are going to want to make one up. Um, everyone in my classroom should definitely have one by now, but if you're a student who doesn't have one yet, just, you know, create one real quick and let me know. Um, but go ahead and find yours. Find the one that you wrote your thesis in. That's what we need. So I'll give you a second to do that. Pause me if you need to. And we're going to move on. So we have this writing doc. This is for our thesis. And remember, we are only allowed to have 500 words for an exhibit. So that's the biggest challenge for an exhibit. I know a lot of students get excited because they think that, oh, the exhibit's got the least amount of writing to do. Well, you actually get a lot of quotes and a lot of captions and a lot of other things that you can make up for that. So I've seen exhibits that probably have like 10,000 words just because they have so many quotes and things. I'm going to show you an example that's kind of similar to that. Um, the challenge is, like, you have to, in 500 words, summarize all those big points that we've been talking about all year. So the exhibits is actually one of the most challenging projects because you have to be very articulate. You have to be very short and to the point, and that's one of the most hard things to do, uh, one of the most difficult things to do for a writer. So we have our exhibit. Um, you have your thesis already by now. So we're in this box, we should only have our final thesis. I know many students in my classroom have used this box to kind of, you know, write several different theses, do a lot of editing. So right now, make sure that you only have one thesis. Make sure you only have one little block, you know, two to three sentences, maybe a little bit more, but that's it. So no bullet points, nothing else, just the thesis, okay? And then these sections, says one through five, these represent your sections on your board. So you guys are all making some kind of different uh, project board, and these sections represent different parts of it. Now you see there's five here. You, you can have more than five if you want. Um, I've seen exhibits with a dozen. I've seen exhibits with two. Um, you can really have as many as you want. I, I re recommend having five at the very least. So I have five here. And this is where you're gonna put your 500 words. Now remember, your thesis counts as one of those 500 words, or part of those 500 words. So a lot of you already have theses that are like 40 to 60 words long. Um, that's that's minus off your 500, so a lot of you have already starting with like 440 between your five sections. So you don't get a lot. You're going to want to make sure you're using your, your actual sections very well, okay? Um, what we want to make sure we also do, every section should have a name. So you want to name your section. Um, these can be a lot of different things, and I'm going to give you an example right now to kind of help you figure that out, okay? So we have our thesis, we have our sections. I'm going to show you an example. So I'm in the National History Day category list. Um, you guys already, if you're my students, you've seen this a lot. If you are a teacher or student watching these outside my classroom, this is a great site. Just go to nhd.org.category or slash categories. Really good place. Um, scrolling down, you'll see documentary and exhibit, blah, blah, blah. Exhibits, we want to go to our exhibit category here. We want to scroll down past all of that stuff. On the bottom where we see these different things, I'm going to click on Senior Individual, because I think it's the one I picked before. Go ahead and open that up. Yep, it's the one I was hoping for. So you can look at any of those projects you want. I'm going to pick this one just because I think it's really well done. Um, they're all well done, but this one especially has a really good organization. So this exhibit's called A City Under Siege, Breaking the Blockade on Flight at the at a time on the air bridge to Berlin. Kind of mucked up that uh, title, my bad. So looking at it, we can clearly see different sections. Even from zoomed out, I can see sections because these guys actually have these little title cards like this. You can kind of see them. I'll bring my mouse over them right now. Those are their sections. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna click on their sections. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna say, okay, encountering a blockade. So that is a section. So if you were gonna do the same thing, you would need to do this. You would need to type in, okay, encountering a blockade. And that's it. And going back, we're gonna scroll down. We have one right here, this is political tension. So we do the same thing, we type in political tension. And we're just gonna keep doing this until we get them all. Um, right here we have one that's a daunting task. 
So these things might be telling us some background information. They might be helping us explain our thesis. Everything is going to be helping though. We have another one in here that says exchanging hope. So we're gonna scroll down. I'm just showing you exactly how I'm doing this. And while I'm doing this, look at the way they organize their materials. See how they lay everything out? See how the pictures can sometimes be on top of information, how they have primary sources and quotes and information along with it. Um, let's do two more, exploring the limits. So we're gonna type that one here. And I'm not gonna do them all. There's probably about 10 on this one, but I'm gonna stop here. Encountering opposition. So this is a case where, oh shoot, I don't have any more you know, sections. Here's how you can make a section. So the, my favorite way is just to highlight a box in a title, hit Control C, and then go down, and then hit Control V. A new section's been made, we'll call it section six. And then what's that title again? Encountering opposition. So we're gonna just go ahead and do that. And we're just gonna call it encountering opposition. Okay, so we have six sections. Again, these guys have way more than that. Um, looks like they have at least a few more sections. We're not gonna go over them all though, just cause, you know, I think you guys get it. So that's how you make new sections. Now here's the big thing. Let's look at exchanging hope. So we're looking at section four, okay? So section four, look, look at this. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine elements, I call them. Actually, they count the title. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sorry, they ten elements, including the title. They have this cool background in the back too, so you know that they're using their construction paper, they're using their ideas wisely. So very cool presentation. Looks very professional. I like it. Um, looking at this thing all together, you know, we have ten elements, and only one of these things is their words, their original word count. Look at this. This, this, and this are primary sources. See these big black boxes? Those are primary sources. Look how they bordered. They have black boxes only showing their primary sources or their quotes. Then they have this kind of blue and light blue. They have like this dark blue and light blue border for their pictures. And their other primary sources. Isn't that interesting? They're showing the judges exactly what is what without even communicating it verbally. They're just showing it by images. And then finally, we have this thing right here. This is kind of gray and black border with these kind of like little like bullet punches it looks like. That's their original words. That's what they actually wrote. So that's what we want to focus on. I know you're not going to like this next part, but I'm actually going to count these. I'm going to count these words and see how many they have. So you got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52. So this is what your judges are going to do too. And I would want you to do the same thing. I want you to want to type 52 words. That's how many are in that section. So your judges are actually going to do the same thing. They're going to be counting all your words, making sure you're not over that 500 limit. Now, if you're in my class, there's a really easy way to find out your limit. You just got to highlight all your boxes here and then go to tools and then click word count. We have 29 words. That's it. We only have 29 words because of titles too. So you got to be careful. Sometimes like you got to realize these titles and things don't count. So all that stuff is actually should be zero. So you'd be really careful. Actually count using boxes alone. So if I was going to say something like Mr. Hamblin is the greatest teacher ever. What will we do when we graduate? and do not get to see him every day. So that's gonna be one of my things. That's what we're gonna write in for a daunting task. How about that? Okay, so I would highlight a daunting task. I would go to tools, I'd click word count, 23 words. I'm going to go ahead and type in 23 words. That's it. And that tells the judges, that tells your teacher, it tells everybody that yes, I have 500 words. So we wanna make sure we're doing that because it's just an easy, quick way of being, just to prove to yourself that you're not going over. If, if you wanna do well in competition, um, this could disqualify you. Like um, some like regional competition's not as bad, but state and nationals, they will disqualify you if you even go a word over. So uh, we have that. You can kind of see the other pictures too. They did a really good job overall, this group, of organizing their information. Very good, clean looking, professional looking presentation. So uh, for exhibits, that's what I would like you to do. Um, I want you to create sections that way. I want you to start actually writing your information into your sections. Remember, the entire point of this is to be using our primary sources, okay? So 
use the primary sources in your book, use the information that you have in order to move forward past this point. That's it for this organization tip. If you have questions, please ask me if you're my students. If you're my students, you can go ahead and close computers. Hello, everyone. This is, uh, again, Taylor Hamlin from Mystery Forge. Uh, thanks for uh, checking out this video. Um, you know, when we're organizing a lot of projects this way, you have to be really careful. Um, students need a lot of coaching. They need to have a lot of information at their fingertips. And so when you're teaching five different projects, it's really hard to be there for every single student. So doing small things like this can be very helpful. I always uh, tell my other teachers who I coach or talk to, to find ways to communicate your desires, your objectives, without actually having to physically be there. Um, you know, OBS videos is what I use. It's a really great way. Even simple things like writing things on the whiteboard or finding Google Docs that you can share with them early on is a great way to do it. So uh, I will put stuff in the video description, especially um, this latest stuff. I'll have a couple other things in there. But if you're curious on how I organize this stuff, check out the other videos too. Um, we have social media as well, so feel free to check that out. But that's it. Going back to the crazy page. Yes, Infinite Hamblins. All right. You guys take care and have a great night. Bye.